So, uh, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is super, super happy to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. Tony, My favorite show. Tony nominee, star of Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. Ben Platt is here. So, for those of you who are jumping into our live stream, uh, if you have any questions for Ben, let us know in the comments below. We'll do our best to, to get to some of those. But uh, as I was saying, we are so excited that you're here. Thanks. You just finished rehearsal. Yes, Sounded indeed. amazing. It's wonderful sound in there. It's beautiful theater, too. I'm really excited. It's, uh, it's a Broadway theater, so like... Feel at home. Yeah, good. You should. <laughs> Very much so. You should. So let's talk about Dear Evan Hansen. This sure. show is selling out every single night of the week. Uh, you are responsible for dehydrating like half of New York City. <laughs> Everyone is bawling. They're so into the show. What is it about this show? and your character that people connect so strongly to? You know, I think, firstly, the show really sort of accurately and without, um, without any kind of lens or filter depicts contemporary society and really just shows sort of what it's like to be alive today in a way that's really sort of honest and human, and I think that people connect to it immediately in that way. And also the, the fact that Evan's at the center of it, somebody who's incredibly lonely and isolated and has a lot of trouble connecting, and the fact that that's sort of exacerbated by the hyper-connectivity of social media and how that kind of pulls him further and further into himself is something that I think everybody really feels, and I think that if people think that maybe they're sort of unique in their loneliness, but when they come to the show, there's something about the communal sort of experience of it that makes people feel that they're sort of not having a unique experience in the best way. Um, so I think that's why everyone kind of sees a bit of themselves in him. It's, it's, that's exactly it. I saw the show two weeks ago, I, I, I felt everything you just said, and, and it's, it's so incredible. But for you, you've been with the show for a few years now. Yes, like three and a half. What has been the most surprising thing to you since the show started in Washington, D.C., moved off Broadway, and now, you know, you're on Broadway? I think, you know, I don't know about surprising, because I love the show and I've always believed in it for, for, since I opened it up the first day of the table read, I knew it was something special, but I think the extent to which the sort of word of mouth grew immediately when we started in DC and how people just fell so deeply in love with the show and so passionate about it so 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 quickly was incredibly surprising and, and the sort of degree to which that grew is it's been incredible and sort of keeps surprising us at every turn and kind of keeps topping our expectations and it really just goes beyond our wildest dreams and that's been insane just sort of the passion of the fan base has been insane and the fan base is huge your <laughs> Instagram page is like chock full of all of these pictures with different celebrities who have come to see the show who have you been most excited to meet? Who? It's a rough one. It's, a, it's a so hard to say. Well, the theater geek in me, Hal Prince came, and he's like one of the greatest creators of theater directors of all time. And I, I freaked out, and that was really incredible. Uh, obviously, Barbara Streisand was... I mean, Casual, it's, yeah. It's Barbara, what are you supposed to do? It's Barbara <laughs> Streisand. Um, and then, of course, Meryl came recently, um, Meryl Streep, and she and I had the opportunity to do a film together with um, Ricky and the Flash. And at that point, I was just... Just, I mean, she couldn't have been wonderful, more sort of kind and warm, but I was just t totally terrified to even be there, so I barely said a few words to her. So it was just nice to be in a, in a setting where I felt a little more comfortable opening up, and to, to have her come and see the show was meant the world. I mean, she's, she's the, the top of the tippity tip, tip top. She's the best. <laughs> um, so, June 11th, big night. Tony Awards are right here on CBS. Oh, yeah. You're nominated. The show is nominated. Yes, indeed. How are you feeling? It's, it's incredible. It's, I mean, it's, I've, I watch the Tonys every year growing up. I waited for it anxiously every year and devoured it. And then I would go on YouTube and watch my favorite performances over and over and over and over again. So to know that I, I'm going to be performing from the show on the Tonys is like insanity. It's just like, it's so surreal to me. And the fact that my whole family is going to get to be there and my mom will be my date. And I'm just, it's, I really, I'm really, really excited. It's going to be a special night no matter what. How does your family feel? I mean, obviously super proud. Like Very proud and just sort of. I think we, I mean, we have a group text going, obviously, because we're a giant Jewish family and there's like a million of us, but <laughs> it's just nice to have every, because so much of this is happening so quickly and it's all kind of snowballing, so to have somewhere to just take in every little thing and share every little moment um, and have the people who saw me put on shows in the backyard and were my first forced co-stars um, say, you know, get to experience this with me, that's made it much more sort of fathomable and also just way more sort of meaningful. Amazing. All right, we have some viewer questions. Great. These ones uh, were submitted on Facebook, Twitter, uh, a little bit uh, of everything here. Excellent. So, Alex Goodson wants to know. What's what up, would, Alex Goodson? <laughs> what would the title of a musical about your life be called? Super Jew. <laughs> super Jew. Super Jew the musical. I am. Sort of a, a mix of like, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, and Fiddler on the Roof. I'm there for it. I'll be front row. Thank you. Let me know when Thank Super you. G the Musical opens on Broadway. Yes. Uh, James wants to know, what's your pre-show ritual? 
Ooh, I have a few. I, I have like a warm-up playlist of songs that I like to sing along to. The latest addition to that is the new Hello Dolly soundtrack, the Put On Your Sunday Clothes. Gavin Creel sing in the beginning of that whole Out There, There's a World Outside of Yonkers. It's like the most beautiful thing in the world. I sing it every day. Hi, Gavin. Um, and then also I get my cast put on before every show. The, 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 my character wears a fiberglass cast, so we, we wrap a new one every night with like a socket and stuffing and, and, and wet fiberglass that hardens. So I have to do that each night. Wow, how mm -hmm. long does that process take? Like 10 minutes, and then at intermission they saw it off with a little Dremel saw. Wow. So we have a whole room full of carcasses of casts. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lewis wants to know, how many tissues do you guys as a cast go through during every performance? Because the audience obviously is going through like millions of them. Well, not as many as you might think because we have very limited opportunities to use them, particularly me. I have like one or two shots to go off stage and like honk everything out of my system. So, but I mean, Kleenex is very thankful for us. Let's just say that. <laughs> this live stream brought to you by Kleenex. Um, <laughs> all right, here's, here's one. Jolene wants to know, what other musician would you want to have a Pitch Perfect style riff off against? Like if you could collab slash riff off with another musician, who would it be? I've been asked this once before actually, and I gave the answer that I'm gonna give again because there's just no better answer. It's Beyonce. And the truth is that I would not really participate. I would just sit and watch her sing and, and then sort of forfeit my turn and ask her to sing again and then try to be friends. So, B, if you're watching. <laughs> please, please come to the show, B. I beg you. So that's, that's one that you haven't met. B's, yeah. She, I mean, she's the ultimate. Yeah. She's, when it comes to live performers that are alive on the earth, yeah. she's number one. I mean, come on. You're up there yourself. Maybe after she has the twins, she can bring the whole fam. Get out of this room. <laughs> um, what song do you sing in the shower? Becca is asking that. Becca, like Pitch Perfect. Um, I, what do I sing in the shower? Let's see. It, I sing once, once the musical a lot in the shower, and I also sing. I actually also sing Grey Gardens the musical because I love Christine Ebersole, and it's all very good for the falsetto. So I like to sing a lot of that in the sun. Really cool, cool top forty hits. <laughs> um, do you get to see like Christine's other show? Do you get to see other shows while you're? No, that's the biggest frustration. Is we have this most like ninety percent of shows have the same schedule, so I haven't been able to see anything. There's like a few shows that opened. Um, a little after us, so they had previews on Monday nights. So I got to see War Paint, which is incredible. Those two women are insane. And I got to see, um, I'm trying to think what else. I I'm, I'm getting to see Hello Dolly on Wednesday night finally because we don't have, we have one Wednesday night where we don't have a show because we have a five show weekend this week. So I get to see my best friend in the world, Beanie Feldstein, who plays Minnie Faye finally in Hello Dolly, which I'm really excited for. But the biggest thing, the most frustrating thing is we go to all these events for the Tonys, these wonderful things, and you hear about these insane performances that are happening, and you're like, I haven't seen a single one of them because I'm doing this freaking show eight times a week, which is the only part of it that's like just killer. But you know, that's why we have Lincoln Center archives. <laughs> um, this is this question is from left field. It's from my brother John. Oh my gosh! Hi, brother yeah. John. He said, "Be honest. On an empty stomach, how many chicken nuggets could you eat, considering there's no one around and you get as many dipping sauces as you want on hand?" Okay, first answer. I don't like dipping sauces. Actually, I'm a big plain person. Like I never put sauce on stuff. Wow. Like not even ketchup. But I love chicken nuggets. Um, I'd say at least like 25. I, yeah, that's 25 nice. to 30. Yeah, that's depending nice on the size of them. If they're if they're the McDonald's ones, at least 25. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right. So the show Dear Evan Hansen is at the Music Box Theater. You're saying you have five shows this weekend? Yes, we do. We will eight, eight a week, but this week we do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then two Saturday, two Sunday. Woof. I don't know how you do it. One at a time. <laughs> um, everyone needs to check it out. And then tonight on the Late Show. You are performing what? Give us a little tease. Yes, of... so we're performing a song we've actually never performed before out of the context of the show. This is the first time that we're doing it anywhere besides the Music Box Theater or the other two theaters our show's been at. It's called For Forever. It's the second song that Evan sings in the show. Um, and I'll give the context for it on, on the show tonight, but it's, it's a really beautiful, beautiful song by Pascal and Paul, and we have a big old string section for, for tonight, and it's, it's pretty gorgeous. I'm really excited. What do you do on a day off since you don't, I mean, you're here. Well, I go to Colbert off. and I sing. <laughs> um, uh, if I don't have to work, I. Try to stay silent, watch some TV, watch some Netflix, keep it quiet, maybe take a walk in the park if it's nice. Just anything calm and rejuvenating and treat yourself. Treat yourself. As Aziz would say. All right, amazing. Aziz and Retta, I love both of them. Retta came to the show and I died. Was she the best? She's just a wonderful human being. How much is she like Donna? Is she like Donna? I mean, yes, because Donna's wonderful and so is she. <laughs> we gotta get Aziz though. I've just, I binged Master of None the second season on, the, on my last day off mm -hmm. and it was just complete genius. I gotta. I'm Amazing. just dying to shake his hand. Anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, thanks so much, Ben Platt. Good luck at the Tonys. We are all rooting for you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, well deserved. Everyone else, the show is at the Music Box Theater. Dear Evan Hansen, go see it. Bring your Kleenex. Bring your best friend. Bring your boyfriend, whoever it is. Uh, it's, it's a show for everybody. Thanks so much, Ben. My pleasure.